in here we've got Merrick and he's going to tell us another story. Go Merrick. I got this from a squirrel and he was carving it with his teeth. And I said to him, that is incredible. That is amazing. How do you do it, squirrel? How do you know what is bare and what's not bare? And he said, it's easy. I just remove what is not bare. And he said, what's even more incredible, what's even more amazing is this story. And the story I'm going to tell you now is the one he told me. Now, Russia is huge. It's so vast. It's so massive. It's so wide. It's so long. It's so high. It's so wide. It's so big. It even has its own sun. And if you don't believe me, go there and you can see it. And it's so cold. It's snowing all the time. And as you may see, you may have seen yourselves, the snow on the trees. The snow is like big fat birds that settle on the fence and on the ground and on the hedges and on the floor. And well, you get the idea. In fact, there's even snow. It's so cold. There's even snow over the sun. Well, the hero of this story, or the maybe considered the villain, had his mouth open. And he was catching snowflakes on his tongue because he was trying to contain the grumbling and the growling and the growling and the grumbling of his tummy. You see, it was Fox. And Fox, as you may know in most stories, is always hungry. Yaznayu, yaznayu, tegawodni, tegawodni. See, even the animals in Russia speak Russian. And he said, I know, I know, tummy, you're hungry, you're hungry, tummy. And it was the wind that brought the news to the nose of Fox that there was food coming. And Nose gave a nudge to Brain to let him know that there was fish. <laughs> oh, yes, he could smell fish, a lot of fish. And it was coming this way. And Ears, well, they also heard the news. They could hear bells ringing and they could hear Nose. Is that a horse or a reindeer? <laughs> Oh, it's a reindeer. And I can hear, nose. is that a man or a woman? Oh, that's a man. And, ah, said Nose, can you tell me, is he riding the reindeer? Oh, no, said Ears. He's on a sleigh. Eyes came between nose and ears because he wanted to have a go. He wanted to see for himself what was going on. Ah, I can see a reindeer. I can see a sleigh and I can see a man sitting on that sleigh with a blanket pulled over his legs. And so he could see that the sleigh, it was like three children working together, nose, eyes and ears. Like making a jigsaw puzzle as they formed the picture of what was going on. And the food was definitely coming their way. And then they all looked to Fox's brain and they said, come on, brain, come up with a plan. Tell us, how are we going to get this food? And so brain thought and he thought and he thought and he thought and he thought. thought. And he came up with a brilliant idea, such a brilliant idea that the mouth did the biggest, widest grin from ear to ear. A sort of crocodile grin, a sort of rusty crocodile that went rusting from being in the water so long. So Fox told Feet down. <sighs> Fox was gone and there was just a flurry, fluffy fur of snow behind him. Now, if you was to weave down that winding, wobbly road, you would get to this reindeer, you would get to this farmer. And he was there with his blanket over his legs and he was having the most amazing dream. He had such a good session, for he had caught little fish, medium fish and big fish. And he was feeling very proud of himself and he was sort of dreaming a little bit like an old black and white film. And there he was looking very heroic with his leg up on the sleigh and his hair was blowing in the wind. And there on his arm, on his big muscular arm, slightly larger than life, was his wife fluttering her eyes, looking up at him with such ardent admiration and such, oh, admiration. 
And so as she was saying how wonderful and how heroic that he managed to get all these fish and saying how handsome he was, almost as handsome as a storyteller, but not quite so. And anyway, he was having this amazing dream when, whoa, he pulled on the reins and brought the sleigh to a stop. He pulled the blanket off his legs. For there was something in the road and he got down and walked around and he looked at the reindeer and the reindeer looked at him and oh nostukni minya ze marauza riba well strike me with a frozen fish he said because your Russian may be a bit low and rusty there. I thought I'd translate that for you. And there he was looking at in the road. There was what seemed to be a dead fox. And he went over and he picked it up. Freshly dead, it seemed, for it still had not quite got rigor mortis. And he thought, this is fantastic. A lovely, fine fur for my wonderful wife. And she can have that around her neck and everybody will adorn her with praise at the market. I think I'll skin it now was in the fox's mind, but he kept perfectly still. <laughs> no, said the farmer, I'll skin it later, <sighs> went the fox. He lifted up the skin that was covering the back of the sleigh, and he put the fox on top of the fish. He put the skin back over, climbed up, pulled the blanket back over his legs. He nestled back into that lovely dream where his wife was admiring him, and with one flick, ah, and off he went down the road. Well, let him, let's let the farmer continue on his journey and let's join the fox in the back of the sleigh. For the fox opened one eye, then another, and it was <laughs> <laughs> he was like a dragon on top of a horse, not of gold, but a fish. <laughs> there was little fish, there was medium fish, and there was big. big. So, you see, Fox was clever enough and mine told everybody that, well, we can't eat all these fish, so what do we do? What do we do? What would you do? Hmm. So they thought, and they thought, and they thought, and they thought, and they thought. And he came up with a plan. He was going to drop the fish one by one out of the back of the sleigh. So Fox picked up the little fish the medium fish and the big, big fish. fish. And he dropped them out one by one, by one, by one, by one. one. And as this was going on, Farmer was having his wonderful dream. Anyway, Farmer got back to the farm where he had been farming and he farmed this for who? Oh, what seemed forever. And as he got there, he got back off his sleigh and he put his foot up on the sled and he took up the heroic pose like that was in his little animation that he had earlier on and he held and he called to his wife and he called for her to come out to come out and see what he had got and she said Yasnita Yasnita I'm busy I'm busy what do you want and he pointed to the sleigh. He pointed to the sleigh for her to see. And she went over there. She brushed off her hands on her apron. And she lifted back the cloth. And she looked inside. And she said to her husband, Mush! Mush! What? Etisanya prosti. Etisanya prosti. And what she basically said to him, husband, husband, this sleigh is empty, it's empty as your head. And she gave him a slap around the head for wasting her time. The husband couldn't understand, what do you mean it's empty? He went back, he flicked the cloth off and he could see inside it was completely, absolutely, totally, utterly full of nothing. No thing at all. He couldn't understand why. He said there was a huge pile of fish and there was a fox. A fox. And of course, the farmer in his head now, like a little puppet show, saw the farmer pick up the fox, put it in with the fish, and then seeing the fish go out one by one by one by one and by one. one. Well, you might think that's the end of the story, but no, because if we go weaving back along that windy, weavy road, we would see the fox sitting by the side of the road under the tree, and he is surrounded by a huge pile of fish, and he picked up a little one, and he just went, oh, and he picked up a medium one, and he went, 
And he picked up a big one and he went, oh, and threw away the bones. I wonder how you would have your fox eat a fish. Anyway, as Fox sat there, along came Brother Wolf, and Brother Wolf said to Fox, Brother Fox, where did you get all those fish? <gasps> now he knew he could not run away from Wolf, and Wolf was far too big for him. But of course, something that Fox doesn't have, uh, Wolf doesn't have that Fox has, and that is a clever brain. And he said, I caught all these with my tail, for you may not know, but Fox actually means thick furred tail. But that's a tale, and that's a story for another time. Thank you.